Welcome back. My name is Dr. Carl Baird and I want to welcome you to our level two workout for knee pain. So what we have to keep in mind is this is a level two workout. So if you haven't yet, be sure to check out our level one workout because a lot of the movements that we're going to do here are built on movements that we learned in level one. And so when you're building strength to solve pain, it's really important that you build that solid foundation before progressing to things that are going too hard because the last thing we want to do is aggravate any sort of knee pain. So if you haven't yet checked out level one, make sure you can perform all those movements before moving on to this workout. If you've done that, we can go ahead and get started with our level two. The equipment that you're gonna need are a red rubber resistance band, a blue eight to 12 inch mini circular band, a medium weight, and then I use yoga blocks, anything that you can step up on. We're gonna do a couple step ups today. And then also you can use the yoga block, something you can put in between your legs to squeeze. So that's what we need. So if you don't have that, be sure to grab it. Then let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's move right into our warm up. First things first, we're just gonna loosen up our hips with the side lunge mobilization. So we're gonna spread our feet out wide, our toes pointed at about a 45 degree angle, and then we're just gonna bend over one knee, stand back up, and switch. So the goal of this is really just start loosening your hip joints, getting any sort of stiffness out, because we're gonna be doing a lot of hip stuff. A lot of the movement down at the knee is controlled by your hips, which is why it's important that we build strength and improve mobility in these joints. So just slow and controlled. You want to feel a stretch on the inside of this straight leg, or if you wanted to sink your hips a little bit lower, you can stretch that hip capsule and the bent leg of that hip too. So it's just really wherever you feel tight, whatever you feel most beneficial. As you start to get warmed up, you can kind of smooth them out back and forth. Just like that. All right. We're gonna move into another hip mobilization exercise for our hip flexors. We're gonna start in the kneeling position here. And we're just gonna do simple hip flexor stretch. So in this position, all we're gonna do is lean over this front knee, keeping your body nice and straight. We wanna feel a stretch or a pull in the front side of this left leg. And so we're gonna start moving in and out of that movement. And each time you move in, you wanna go a little bit further. Again, we're Trying to feel a stretch in that hip flexor. Depending on where you're tight, you might feel it in the quad as well. And on this last one, we're gonna move into just a static hold. So from right here, we are holding this position and feeling a stretch here. If you wanna get a little bit more of a stretch, you can bring those arms up, lean back, you can bend to the opposite direction. What you really just don't want to do is kind of lean forward like this. That's going to take all the stretch off the front there. All right, then we're going to switch on over to the other side and we're going to do the same thing, stretching out that hip flexor. So again, we're going to start first 30 seconds, just moving in and out of that position, just so we don't go from nothing to stretching it as hard as we can. We want to slowly kind of get ourselves into the position. Just feels better. Each time you go forward, you're moving a little bit further. So again, you want to feel that stretch on the front side of this back leg. We're going to do it one more time and then we'll do our 30 second hold on this side here. Nice work. And again, same thing. If you want to add a little back bend, stretch to the opposite side, just whatever feels good. And done. 
Next, we're gonna do one more hip mobilization yoga flow. So there are a couple ways to progress this. I'll slowly progress you through it. It's really gonna depend on your ability level, but we're gonna start in a high plank position. So hands right under the shoulders, toes under the ankles. And the first thing we're gonna do, this is our first progression, is just move into this downward dog position. So shift your hips in the air and pedal out your feet. So you're gonna feel a stretch in your calves, in the back of the hamstring. And if you want, you can press through your hands to stretch out in that mid back a bit too. Again, this is all about warming up, just whatever feels tight. So if this is as far as you can get, I would just come back to this high plank, hold it for a bit, and then repeat. But if you're feeling pretty good, feeling pretty mobile, the next step you can do is taking your left foot Bring it to the outside of your left hand, and then we're gonna open up to the left. So kind of a full body stretch, feeling it in that mid back, bringing the hand back down. And now we're really gonna stretch this left hip here. So again, you can either keep your back knee up or you can drop it down. But what we really wanna do is move over this front leg you can do small circles. What I like to do is drop this left elbow down, turn the opposite direction. You get that big stretch in that hip capsule there. And then we're gonna come back to that starting position. Go into that down dog again. And again, pedaling out the feet. Again, if that, if that movement is too hard, it really just depends on your mobility level. You can just keep going high plank to the uh, these pedal outs and then all we're going to do one more but now we're going to do the right side outside of the right hand and open up to the right stretching out that mid back really trying to reach behind you here and then plant the right hand back down again you can keep this back leg up or you can drop it down and we're just moving around this right hip you can drop that right hand to the ground and we're done. Do one more down dog for good measure just because it feels good. All right. Now that we're nice and loose, our hips are warmed up, we can move into the strength portion of our workout. So what we're going to do is a glute bridge variation called the glute bridge squeeze. I use a yoga block to place between my knees. But if you, have, if you don't have this, you can use like a soccer ball, anything about that size, eight inches in diameter to put it between your knees. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze the block with about 25% inward contraction. So I'm not squeezing as hard as I can, but I am pressing inward to create tension on the inside of my legs. And then I'm just doing a glute bridge, pressing through my feet, bring those hips up into the air. So this is building strength in the hamstring and glutes which again, as I mentioned before, these hip muscles control a lot of movement down at those hips, or down at the knees, excuse me. And then I'm pressing inward and that's creating just a lot of tension in the leg as well. So we get that kind of extra strengthening in our groin and adductor muscles. At the top of this movement, there should be a good amount of tension if you're really pressing through the feet, squeezing the glutes at the top, and squeezing inward. That's a pretty tough movement to do. Keep going. We got 10 more seconds. Squeezing in, squeezing at the top, back down. Let's do one more. And done. Next. We're gonna move into a standing position. So that was actually our only ground movement of the day. What we're gonna need for that is this eight inch mini band. We're gonna do what are called monster walks. So we're gonna slip it the band around our feet, put it right above our knees. So when we stand up with the band, what the band does is it pulls your knees inward like that. We wanna counter that to activate our glute med and TFL muscles up here. 
So what we're going to do is just really press our knees out and then it's just going to be a step to the right and a step to the left. So you go wide hip width. Common mistake I see with this one, is people come in too narrow, you lose all that tension. So you want to go wide, hip width is about as narrow as you want to get. But you're just going to go back and forth. Again, a nice like little defensive stand. If you ever play basketball, you can get into this athletic position. Slight bend in the knees, we don't need to be locked like that. So again, slight bend in the knees, send the hips back a little bit. Just working back and forth. You should be starting to feel a burn outside of the hips with this one. Nice work. You got 10 more seconds back and forth. And done. Okay, we can slide our band off and we're gonna move to one of my favorite single leg balance control and strengthening exercises called the running man. So this is a coordination exercise too. So what we're gonna do if I'm standing on my left leg, I'm gonna bring my right knee up and my left arm up. So it's almost like I'm running in place here. Main thing, make sure that you have a slight bend in this knee that it's not locked out like that. And then from there, the movement is we're gonna bring our knee and our elbow back as we hinge over this hip and I bring my opposite arm up. So it's, we're kind of running in place, slow and controlled. We're gonna go back and forth in this movement. Whoa, if you lose your balance, do your best to catch yourself. But if you do lose your balance, it's okay, fall out and then restart in that starting position. Try to get back there as quick as you can. This is a harder exercise than it looks. It's one of my favorites to again work on balance, control, and you get a little bit of this glute need. So you should start to feel a burn on the outside of your stance leg here. Make sure that it's nice, slow, and controlled. It doesn't need, it's not about how fast you go, it's how long you can maintain balance and control. So you don't wanna fall out of this position because you lose all that tension. Good. Okay, we're gonna switch to the other side. So if it's my right foot, again, slight bend in my right, we're gonna bring the left foot up, right hand up, and then it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna bring the foot and arm back, just like you're running in place. Slow and controlled. Make sure it's, again, you're kind of hinging at that right hip. So it's not just like a arm and leg. There is a little bit of trunk movement in there as well. Good. Slow and control, maintaining balance. Pay attention to how you feel. That's what usually what you'll find. One side might be a little bit harder than the other side. Not that that's good or bad, but it's good information to know about your body. So we don't want to just go through the movements with a lot of these. Pay attention to what your body's telling you. The more you know about your body, the more likely you are to avoid pain and injury. All right. Nice work. Next, we're moving into our functional core strengthening exercise. This is where our weight comes into place. So we're going to do what's called a suitcase march. So we're going to pick up that medium weight. I use a kettlebell. You can use a dumbbell. You can use anything that you can grab, water jug, anything that you have available. I think I've had somebody use a cast iron pan, which was <laughs> a fun video that they sent me. But what you're gonna do is a light squeeze on the weight, roll those shoulders back and in place, and then we're just gonna march, holding for a second or two at the top, bringing it back down, and switching. Nice work. So again, this is what we call a functional way to strengthen your core. So it's not a direct strengthening exercise like a plank or a sit up or a crunch, but it strengthens the core 
in a more functional way, meaning how you actually use your core in daily life, which is going to be more important for avoiding pain and injury. Making sure, again, you keep that tension up that arm. You don't want the weight to be pulling you to the side or you counterbalancing it like that. You want to keep this nice, straight position. Good. That's a minute. So once you've done a minute, switch to the other side. And again, before performing, you're going to do a light squeeze on the weight, roll those shoulders back, and we're going to go again. Again, just slow and controlled, holding that weight at the top. Holding the knee up at the top for a second. Nice work. And again, you can kind of poke, you can feel how your core is engaged to kind of create this balance. Again, same thing. If you fall out, just try to get back in and start over. And again, pay attention. A lot of times when I teach this exercise to people, one side is a lot more difficult than the other based just on imbalances and core strength. It's just, again, good to know because the more you know, the better you can fix it. All right. That is a minute. Nice work. Okay. Now we're going to be moving into our full body movement pattern exercises. For this one, we're going to need our rubber resistance band here. What we're going to do, place it on the ground and step on top of it with your feet about hip width apart and you are going to be holding on to the sides. This is going to be our hip hinge exercise for the day. It's called a banded hip hinge. What we're going to do from there is send those hips back, keeping that spine nice and straight just till you feel tension in the hamstrings and standing back up. Good. So the hip hinge, again, one of those foundational movements. This one's really important to get right, not only for knee pain, but for back pain as well. Learning how to keep a nice neutral spine as you move through this exercise. It's gonna be really important. But again, at the bottom, you should feel your hamstrings and your glutes engaged. If you can't tell by now, building strength in the hamstring and glutes could probably solve, big generalization here, but probably solve about 75% of knee pain. Strong glutes, strong hamstrings. Just unfortunately, we live in a society where a lot of people sit for work, sit in their cars, and so we don't use these hamstrings and glutes as much as we should. All right, last one here. And back up. Okay, next, we're gonna move into our squat patterning. We're gonna do what's called a tempo squat, which just means we're gonna slow that squat down to help really ingrain that movement pattern as we start to build strength, and again, hamstring and glutes. So, to perform, we're gonna do three seconds on the way down, we're gonna do a two second hold at the bottom, and then come up with a one second. So it's a three, two, one tempo. So I'll take you through it. We're gonna go on the way down. Three, two, one. We're gonna hold it for two, one. Then we're gonna stand back up. And then here we go again. Three, two, one. One, two, at the bottom. Stand back up. Three, two, one, one, two, stand back up. So with our squat, we're really making sure that that initial movement is sending the hips back and then dropping down. So what we want to avoid are these squats where that first movement is that knee bend, unlocking at the knees. That puts a lot of unnecessary force on the front of the knee, which contributes a lot of knee pain. So make sure it's hips back and then descend into that squat. Back up, we'll do one more. Three, 
two, one, and down. Nice work. Next, we're gonna move into our lunging patterning with what's called a single leg step down. So this is gonna be an eccentric exercise to strengthen your quad and patellar tendon, which again is very common in people with knee pain. And so this is gonna be a great exercise to build strength. So with our step, I use two yoga blocks, but an eight inch, 12 inch step, we're gonna stand up, we're gonna bring our toe up, and then we're gonna just drop until our heel touches the ground and then press back up off of this front leg. So again, that eccentric component is slowly lowering down to the ground. And again, we just wanna tap. We don't wanna drop all of our weight on the ground and then press up. We really wanna focus on that lowering with a quick tap and back up. That's that eccentric movement that I'm talking about is on that lower. And so that's what we really wanna focus on with this exercise. Again, there's a lot of balance and control that goes into this exercise as well. So if you do fall out of it, it's okay. Just reset, start back at the top and go again. Good, but just like all these, we're focusing on form. We're focusing on being able to control the movement. So I like to move pretty slow. And I honestly think moving slower through these movements makes it a bit harder. You can really feel that tension on the front. Good, okay. We're gonna switch sides and do the same thing. So starting at the top, bring your foot up and drop down, good. Slow and controlled, tap the heel on the ground, come back up, slow and controlled, come back up. Nice work. Again, if you fall out, just reset, get back into that position. And again, it's all about that lowering, just tapping that heel down, not bringing the weight down and then pressing up. That would be what's called a concentric contraction, which is still a great movement, but not quite what, what, what we're going for. Nice. Again, paying attention side to side, one side feel harder than the other. A common thing what you'll find, especially if you've had an injury on one side, torn ACL, torn Achilles tendon, anything on one side, there's usually some imbalances side to side. So just pay attention, see if you notice that. And we're done. All right, so that was round one. Those are all of our exercises we're gonna do today. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna start back up at the glute bridge and go through it again. So, Taking our block or ball or whatever you used in round one, we're gonna put that between our knees. Again, it's that 25% squeeze inward and then just doing that glute bridge. So what we're really focusing on with this one is tension. So when you press in, you want to feel that tension on the inside of the legs at the top you're squeezing at the top so there's tension in these glutes and these hamstrings so at the top you should feel a good amount of tension but again all we're doing building strength hamstring and glutes i said it previously but building strong hamstring and glutes not only going to protect you from knee pain but it's going to protect you from back pain as well probably the most important muscle group to strengthen, to prevent pain, to prevent injury, and to look good. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's important, right? Nice work, 10 more seconds. All right, we'll put the block to the side. We're gonna take our blue mini band before we stand up. We're gonna put it over our knees. Then we're gonna stand on up. We're gonna do our monster walks. So again, reminder, that band is pulling us inward like that, so we wanna be pressing out. Slight bend in the knees, slight hinge in the hips for that little defensive stance. And then you're just gonna go side to side. Just make sure, again, the knees aren't locked out and this isn't the movement. Just that slight bend 
back and forth. And remember not to get too narrow with this. So we don't need to bring the feet to touch here because we lose all that tension. So it's about hip width wide, hip width wide. And we're feeling it in this glute med muscle, which is another one of the most important part of the glute complex, but one of the most important muscles to prevent standing on single leg and that knee caving inward like that, which is where you'll see a lot of knee injuries and a lot of pain. So that's what we're trying to do, build strength in that glute med. Nice. Okay, moving back up into our running man. So starting on the left side, slight bend in that left knee, right up, left arm up. And from there, we're hinging at the hips, sending those arms back. Nice. Slow and controlled. So again, this works on balance, control. This is a really good one if you have foot or ankle problems. I like to actually perform this one barefoot because it forces those muscles of the foot to grip the ground. If you fall out of it, just get right back in. You should start to feel that burn on the outside of that stance leg. So on my left side currently, again, it's harder than it looks. Don't need to do a lot with this one. All right, we're gonna get back to that starting position and we'll switch to the other side. Nice work. Okay, let's move to that right side. That means left knee up, right arm up, and down. It's a good coordination exercise. A lot of times, the hardest part about this is just getting that coordination down. Really good for walking and running, building strength in those movements. When we run, we spend about 60% of our time on this single leg. And if we don't have strength to support ourselves in that single leg, that's when that knee can cave in. We lose our balance, just more impact at the knee, which contributes to knee pain. So it's really important that we have this strength to support ourselves in the single leg. And this is a great way to do it. Nice work. And down, good. Okay, moving to our functional core strengthening exercise. We got our suitcase march. So with this one, again, slight grip on the weight, 25% to create that tension up the arm. Roll the shoulders back. And then we're just gonna march in place. So again, you can use a kettlebell, dumbbell. I always recommend everybody, like if you're having an at-home gym set up. A medium to heavy kettlebell is one of the things you should really, really think about getting. They're so versatile and they can be used in so many different exercises and they're way better than any sort of machine, kind of those gimmicks you see on TV, you know? Just a simple medium-sized kettlebell and you can do a lot to build that strength. So if you don't have one yet and you're serious about getting stronger from home, I really recommend you bite the bullet. Again, they're, it is more expensive than you want it to be, these kettlebells, but if you're gonna spend money on anything to get stronger, I really recommend you get a medium to heavy kettlebell. Just what that weight is, is gonna be dependent on how strong you are. This one, I believe, is about 35 pounds. That's a medium, about a medium weight to me. Okay, switching to the other side. Squeezing, rolling the shoulders back, and marching in place. Same thing with the other equipment in this workout that we're doing. This is what I recommend everybody has is kettlebell, one of the red rubber bands, which we'll use on that banded hip hinge, those eight inch circular bands, and some sort of step up like we use those yoga blocks. And honestly, for the workouts we do to build strength, to keep active and maintain your lifestyle, those are, that's what you really need. You don't need 
a big expensive whatever it is I've seen some crazy stuff <laughs> I actually got a call from somebody who wanted me to work with them in their garage they just redecorated the garage and I went over there and it looked like they just bought out like a 24-hour fitness it was all these equipments and I was like ah if you were gonna spend this thousand dollars I would have recommended like totally different equipment and obviously you don't want to say that to them because they just invested a big amount in the garage so we had to work around it but if they would have seen me before I would have said kettlebells barbells <laughs> a lot cheaper take up less space you're good to go okay <laughs> enough of me rambling let's move on we got our banded hip hinge so this is we're gonna take our band step in the middle again you want to keep it even both sides keep your feet about hip width apart and then from there we're going to perform our hinge movement so slight bend in the knees send those hips back really engage those hamstrings and then stand straight up send the hips back engage those hamstrings and back up nice work main thing with this one really focus on keeping your spine nice and straight in that neutral position so not letting it come down like that and that you initiate the movement by sending your hips back so it's not a squat like this it's hips back create tension in those hamstrings and stand on up nice work last one here hips back tension in the hamstrings stand on up nice work moving on to our squats we got our tempo squats so again that's just slowing the squat down what we're going to do to make it a little bit harder this time is we're going to do a little bit of a longer pause at the bottom so again it's the three two one on the way down now we're going to do a five second hold four three two one and stand up so that isometric hold at the bottom it's a great way to build strength if you're not there yet it's okay just do that two second hold but if you want to challenge yourself hold it at the bottom three two one and back up from the side three two one on the way down five four three two one and back up go again three two one five four three two one back up three two one again the purpose of slowing this all down is just to ingrain that pattern so you don't have to think about everything you want it to become automatic your brain just to know what to do and that's why slowing it down can help with that all right nice work we're on to our last exercise hope you're starting to get a sweat I'm getting a nice little sweat here so again we're doing that single leg step down so stepping up onto our blocks toe up and we're just tapping that heel pressing up on the way back down a couple ways to make this one harder again you can hold weights on each side or raise your block up so this is about eight inches here but if I went to 12 inches had to lower a bit down longer eccentric move it's gonna be a lot harder so if you want to challenge yourself that's what I recommend add weight or do a higher step but again this is a quad strengthening and through that patellar tendon what they found these eccentric exercises are one of the best things to overcome tendinopathies or pain in the knee so patellar tendinitis which is pain in that tendon right at the bottom of the knee common cause of knee pain this is going to be a great exercise for it good switch to the other side all right last minute here you're almost there nice work just tapping that heel down coming back up you're doing great I've seen this program work for people that have had over 10 years of knee pain that have done 
physical therapy, chiropractic, massage for years, and they've got that temporary relief, but they still couldn't run, they still couldn't walk. And the thing that was wrong is they just weren't strong enough to do the activities that they wanted, which is especially true if you're a runner. You should definitely have a strength training routine to make sure that your body is strong enough to support that. If you're a hiker, even walking, I'm biased, but everybody, <laughs> no matter what you do, should do some sort of strength training if you're concerned about how your body's gonna feel as you get older. All right, nice work. That is it. So that is our level two workout for knee pain. My name again is Dr. Carl Baird. If you have any questions about this workout, leave them in the comments below. I do read them all. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, it's Dr. Baird here. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page to catch all our videos designed to help you build the strength and confidence to live active, healthy, and happy lives. You won't find it anywhere else.